welcome every to the latest short video from GPS training. Now today I've got my dear wife Jane with me because we're going to have a bit of a competition. So welcome Jane again to our YouTube channel. Thank you. And we are in the Lake District, so we pan around. We have one guys there, which we can't really see behind us. We'll see as we go, we go on. So we've just been delivering a course in the Lake District, a GPS two-day GPS training course, and we've just finished on the Sunday evening. So we thought we'll utilize this time to have a bit of fun for you guys on YouTube. What we're going to do in today's YouTube is we're going to analyze which is the most accurate outdoor GPS unit currently on the market. So we've got a selection of GPS units and GPS watches. And what we're going to do is first of all, put them into the order that we think will be the most accurate. Then we're going to take them for a short walk. We'll overlay the routes on some route planning software and we'll analyze which one is the most accurate outdoor GPS unit or GPS watch. So first of all, Jane's going to get the units that are behind me in the order that she thinks is the most accurate and which one is going to be the least accurate. I'll then have a little bit of a play and move things around and I'll go for a quick walk and see who's right. Which units are we going to compare? We've got the Montana 700. We have a Garmin Phoenix 6S GPS watch. We have the Oregon 700. We have the Garmin GPS map 66S. We have Garmin Instinct GPS watch. And then we have the Garmin GPS map 65S. So first of all, Jane's gonna put them in the order of which one she thinks is gonna be the most accurate GPS unit when we take them on a walk. So then Jane, what are the order that you put the GPS units in? Okay, so I'm going with, I reckon the 65S is gonna be my winner. It's a new generation model. It's got multiband in it, which means it's gonna get accuracy because it's got more satellites to link from. So that's my number one up there. Number two? Number two, we're going with the Montana 700 series. Great new edition, new generation units. Plus, it's got the Galileo satellites. Number three. Number three, slightly older technology we're going to now. Bus 66S was the first one to come up with the Galileo, so I'm hoping that one's going to come in third for me. Number four. Number four, we're going back to old school here. The Oregon 700, still a top, top good GPS unit. Not wrong with it, but it hasn't got the modern Galileo and the modern multiband satellites. And in low two places, you put the two I'm watches. I'm putting my two watches, yeah. They just haven't got the same brain skills as my other GPS handheld units just because they're watches good for, for navigational purposes i love them this is my personal watch it's still a good navigational tool but can't play with them before. So phoenix success and instinct down and the, the bottom down at the bottom now yeah. my difference would be i'm gonna put the feet i'm gonna put the phoenix 6x watch there so again we'll just drop the uh, oregon so you can see it's not, not broken, not broken. And therefore that's why it's got gorilla glass on it so i'm going to swap that around i think the Ooh. phoenix 6s is going to be more accurate than the uh, the oregon. oregon and then i'm going to just put the instinct at the bottom i think Based it's a newer what, newer newer gps watch also um it's got the aerial around the edge here so i think that's going to be uh, more accurate than the oregon but i think the but rest of the board there. The so my thought is garmin instinct at the bottom then followed by oregon 700 then garmin garmin phoenix 6s garmin gps map 6s because that's the first one handheld that uses the galileo as jane rightly says montana 700 again recent one year old gps unit utilize the galileo then i've got no doubt the phoenix the gps map 65 um S with the multiband which uses five satellite system is going to be the most accurate GPS unit so what we're going to do now is going to take them on a walk and we're going to analyze which one is the most accurate outdoor GPS unit and watch how are you recording this what we're doing is actually we're recording a track so each GPS unit will record a track so we've just set the watches away which really should be a course on a watch and then we're recording tracks on the GPS units. So we're just carrying them in our hands. So there we are. We've got watches on our wrist and GPS units in the hands. So Jane's got three in hers. I've only got one on mine. I've got the Montana because I'm also holding the camera as well. So that's what we're doing. So we're just carrying them. I'm always going to be walking to the right of Jane. So therefore, when we overlay it, am I always going to be on the right? We'll only see. See the wonderful fells behind us? Isn't this beautiful? Blencathra. The wonderful fells of the Lake District 
And what we're going to do is we've got open uh, land at the moment. So, uh, sorry, open skies. So we've got a very clear view of the sky at the moment. We're just walking through some wonderful fields. We're going to go across a bit of more land, but then we're going to go under some trees as well. So we've got a short section where we're going to be under trees. So we'll see if the accuracy fails on any of the GPS units when we're going under the trees. So here we are, Montana 700, Oregon 700, Garmin GPS Map 66S and Garmin GPS Map 65S, and then both our Instinct, Instinct Watch and Phoenix 6S Sapphire. So let's see how we get on. So we're just coming up to the gate, we'll catch up in a few moments. We're up to the end of the, the field section, we then go on to the open mall, and that will make no difference really. I think the main difference is gonna be the, the, uh, the view on the sky, and again, you can see there's going to be no, any problems there. So we'll just climb over this stile onto the open moorland. Leave, sorry to leave, the lovely Swaledale sheep. The Swaledale sheep. So it's the, one of the native breeds, as well as the Herdwick, that we find here in the Lake Don't we love the little barns that we find down here where they would have stored the hay in the past uh, when they would feed the uh, sheep over winter. So just leaving a field for the Swaledale sheep. The little barn, we've got the wonderful fells of the Lake District behind. dropping down to the wooded ravine. We've just actually just come off the moorland. It'd be a very short stretch along the road. Now we're dropping down to the, the wooded area here. So there's a lovely little footbridge taking us across the burn, as we would call it in the northeast of England. Um, and hopefully we'll stop at a, we'll go slowly in that section and just see if any of the GPS units or GPS watches will struggle to pick up signal under there or lose some of its accuracy so that's what we're doing now so we're just going to go through a little little wicket gate here and we're going to go under the wooded section and i'll give it a little video and we can see what the tree cover is like lovely picturesque burn we're just actually just stopping on the footbridge so we all have to be in front of it because a single path footbridge so this is we've got some tree coverage ahead so it's not a complete cover of a canopy it's got this sort of section that we're going to go through It'd be interesting to know if the tree cover that we see above us is not alter the accuracy of more of each of the gp issues so we're just going to go through this bit of a gate and we're going to just uh, walk steadily up there's a bit of a track here so this section is fairly well wooded and we're going to see if we lose any accuracy of any of the outdoor GPS units or GPS. Again, we've got this little wooded lane section, so a lovely little lane. It's actually down to a crossing of the river. So again, tree cover here, fairly dense trees as we walk. It'll be interesting to see when we overlay it on the map where this alters the accuracy of any of the units or watches. Now we're back on a a short road which takes us back to the Millin pub at Mongreiser. Again, wonderful clear view of the sky. If anybody does any cycling, this is actually part of the coast to coast cycle route. So if you cycle this coast to coast cycle route, you will of course walk along or cycle along this section of road, which is going to just quickly take us back to Mongreisdale. Again, fairly good clear view of the sky. There's some tree cover just coming up, but I don't think that will affect anything in any way. But I don't know. We'll see when we overlay it on our route planning software. at Mongreis Air Village Hall, which is where we do our, our GPS training courses in the Lake District. So we've recorded our track. All we've done is record the track, we've saved the track. So the next thing we need, we need to overlay it on the route planning software and let's see how accurate each of the GPS units or watches are. So then I've loaded all the tracks and courses onto Garmin Basecamp. I've over overlaid on some open source mapping because actually that's often the more accurate mapping. It's not great in the UK because it doesn't show you footpaths and bridleways, but it actually shows you very accurately where roads are and also where paths are on the ground. And to be honest, I've been looking at this now for about 15, 20 minutes and I'm finding it very, very hard to come to a conclusion which one is the best one and which one is the worst one. Actually, I can tell you which one's the best and which is the worst, but the other, quite mixed up some performed better during the walk than what others did so in first place 
I put the Garmin GPS map 65 S Cyan in this diagram above. So you can see all the different tracks here. So 65 S Cyan, Montana 700 is the green, 66 S is the red, the Phoenix 6S is yellow, Instinct Watch is, is, is magenta, and the Oregon 700 is blue. So the clear ones is, the Oregon 700 seemed a fair bit off the other ones. Now, this is the footpath area. It's, it's quite interesting actually, because you can see where we change direction, where we cross um, walls and this kind of thing. So you can see here, for instance, this is where we, we cross the, the wall, uh, which is where just for the video, this is the little hook we saw in the field. So this is where we cut the wall. You can see as we cross the wall, both the instinct watch and the Phoenix successor, you can very much see our arm movements as we were actually walking, where the handheld units, which were kept being kept a lot more level, you can see have a lot cleaner run through this area that was the wall. But I think some of the key areas where we can analyze the true accuracy is we actually came down, this is the open moorland here that we came down. We actually came down and walked down this little lane here. So you can see the lane here, this little farm lane that we came down and you can see here on the open source mapping. So you can see the Garmin GPS map 65S comes along, bang down that lane. Okay, Oregon 700, a little bit off the lane at this point. So in, in according to this lane, it should actually be in third position because in second position down the lane, was the Phoenix 6S. That was very much um, near enough on top of the 65S, which is where the lane is. Instinct Watch was a little bit off at that point, but the Oregon 700, again, quite a few meters off to our right-hand side. So that's quite a good example. Then we came down the road here, which is a short walk down the road, and then we cut down. This is the wooded section that we see here. So this is the wooded section, which is where we cost the little bird. So again, the Oregon 700, I think quite a way off there. Look at it as it came off there. All the rest of them are here, but it's it's jumped off quite a few yards off to our right hand side. So by no doubt that is the, the poorest satellite signal. There's the um, Garmin GPS map 65. Montana 700, I think really did very well through this area of wooded section. So did the 66S, I think they're the, the quad, quad helix aerial has performed very, very well. But I'm very impressed by the Phoenix 6S. Phoenix 6S performed very well and also did the Instincts. So again, considering the Instincts is such a cheap watch, that did very well. So in some ways, you might actually put the Phoenix 6S. I originally had it above the Garmin GPS map um, 66S, but I've just moved it down into fourth place for a number of reasons. So here we are coming back down that road as we finish off. Garmin GPS map 61st, bang on that road. Montana 700, a bit of a wobble here. I don't know what happened at this point. Maybe this is me doing some filming, I don't know. 66S, a little bit off the road there. 6S performed better at this final section. Garmin Instinct Watch, again, performed very, very well down the road. Oregon 700, a little bit off to our right-hand side. It has been all walk. So it's quite interesting when we come down the last bit, we cross the bridge. This is where we cross the bridge here. You can see all over the place, Oregon 700, I completely lost it there. GPS map 65S came down across the bridge to where we finished it. Again, Montana 700 performed very, very well there. 66S performed less well uh, at that final stage. Again, you would put the Phoenix 6S above it and also the Instinct above it on that final section. And then the Oregon 700 again, completely off there. Uh, at the end. So it's taken quite a lot of while. I've analysed those three areas which are walking through the fields, walking down the roads where I can analyse exactly where the road is, also that section going through the trees. And the order I've eventually got them in is, in first place, the Garmin GPS map 65S, which was Cyan on that map. Montana 700 in second place. Garmin GPS map 66S in a close third, really with the Phoenix 6S, you could actually have the Phoenix 6S and the Garmin GPS map 66S in joint third position. Then the Garmin Instinct, and then in last place for the Oregon 700. One thing I've been very impressed with is the performance of the watches. If you remember when we were walking, we had our watches 
on our left hand and that was when we were carrying the GPS units. So the most majority of the time our watches were actually facing the ground just the way we were carrying them. But actually for them to come in potentially join third and fifth position it makes me wonder if they perform better if we'd held them up looking at the sky which is really the way the watches should have been being used. So overall I think it's 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 an interesting there's not an awful lot in it is there really I think that's one thing I take away from it there's an awful an awful lot in the accuracy of these GPS units I think there's no doubt the Garmin GPS map 65s I think next time we need to take out the GPS map 66 SR which is the other multiband GPS unit and see how that performs and in, sad, in last place sadly is the Oregon 700 there's not much between the other four you know they some perform better at certain sections in the walk so i very much hope you've enjoyed this short video looking at the accuracy on outdoor gps units and gps watches if you enjoy what you've seen from ourselves here at gps trade please don't forget to subscribe on our youtube channel and if you get any feedback please leave it in the comments box below and thanks for watching